copy of the Bible, rather a part of the Bible, New Testament, in its entirety, offered to you freely, without cost, obligation to you. If you'd like to have one, then please do feel free to come and ask for one. It is, uh, when all said and done, it is God's Word, means by which God speaks to men and women today, and of course, very clearly and plainly, that even a child could understand the Bible. Jesus says that, uh, except you become as children and be converted, you shall in no wise enter God's kingdom, that childlike, simplistic faith, you know, that doesn't require signs and wonders, that doesn't require evidence or proof, but just simply takes God at his word. If you will not believe the Bible, God says you will not believe at all. So if you'd like a copy of God's Word, then do feel free to come and ask for one. The Bible, of course, is where I'm coming from, the reason why I hold an open Bible before you is that you might understand that that's where the message I declare to you is coming from, listen if you will, to what the Word of God says. For to be carnally minded is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. To be carnally minded is death. That is, of course, the natural state and condition of men as they are born into this world. All of us, yourself included. But of course, um, you know, it's... Uh, Evident, you know, if you're that kind of person, which I guess the majority are, that you never get beyond the flesh. You know, you never get beyond what will I wear today? What will I eat today? Nothing uh, beyond that. Never a thought of anything spiritually. No thought about God in your mind at all, unless, of course, there happens to be a street preacher around speaking about God and reminding you of your Creator. To be that way is to be carnal. To be carnally minded, God says, is death. There is no profit at all because it is the Spirit who gives life, eternal life, spiritual life, only by being born again, as Jesus puts it, by the Spirit of God, made alive, delivered, as it were, from that fleshly, carnal existence. But of course, to be carnally minded is the result of the depravity of nature in which, of course, we are all born. Born in a sinful nature, conceived, God says. Born in sin, shapen in iniquity. Every man, woman, and child born into this world, excepting, of course, the Son of God himself, Jesus Christ. But that's the state, you see, that's the condition of each and every one of us. 
and unless that nature, depraved nature is changed, altered by the power of God and by the Spirit of God, well then you are simply carnally minded and will remain so, live so and die so, unless that is God changes that nature unless you're born again as Jesus puts it. To have a carnal mind, of course, is to be opposed to the mind of God. It is to have no spiritual mind, no spirituality of mind, no thought of God, and of course opposed to God, to the mind of God which is revealed to us, of course, in the Bible, in the Word of God. It is only when you have been reborn, born again of God's Spirit, that you will begin to be spiritually minded and to cease to oppose the mind of God until you are born again. You will remain in opposition both to God and of course to his righteousness. It's a nature you see contrary to God, nature, mind, practice, ungodly. It means you see uh, to be contrary to God in your nature and in your practice too. That's why you see that people do the things that they do that they ought not to do that is contrary to God and contrary to the mind of God because they have carnal minds that are opposed to God and all the goodness of God, the righteousness of God and the salvation of God even. Even though they be in terrible danger, living as it were on the edge of a precipice over which is eternal death. Yet uh, you are told time and again of this danger, but yet uh, it is of no consequence to you, no concern to you, because you have, as God puts it, a carnal mind. The carnal, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. This is what the Bible means by the term ungodly. To be ungodly is to be carnally minded, and to be carnally minded is to be ungodly. One and the same thing. The carnal mind, you see, is ignorant concerning the things of God. No knowledge of God, no knowledge of righteousness, no, no knowledge of God that is in the intimate, loving, and saving relationship. Oh, a knowledge of God, certainly, that all men have, because there is no man born of a woman who does not have the knowledge of God. It is within you innately stamped upon your innermost being and of course cannot be removed. You may use foolish notions such as evolution, secularism, atheism and the like, but that will not erase nothing, nothing will ever erase the knowledge of God that you have within you. But of course the knowledge of God that you have is not in love and in salvation, but of course the knowledge of God uh, in displeasure, under his holy displeasure, his wrath is for this reason that the Bible tells us that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So a knowledge of God you have, and as a result of all that God has made, he says that whoever 
you be a man, you are without excuse. Or you have a knowledge of God, but in displeasure, wrath, separated from God, from His goodness, His righteousness, His mercy and kindness. That ignorance, you see, it goes along with the carnal mind. To be carnally minded is death, says God. The carnal mind, of course, is impure because it's opposed to God, opposed to goodness, opposed to righteousness, and opposed to purity. God, the Bible tells us, is of purer eyes than to behold evil. But of course, the carnally minded person is a person who gravitates towards impurity. Maybe perhaps you ask yourself the question in a quieter moment. Why is there so much impurity in our society today? When's all this uncleanness, all this sexual perversion that abounds in our society today. Why is this? Because you live in a carnally minded society amongst the carnally minded people who will always gravitate towards that which is impure. The, the carnal mind will always do so. The impure loves the impure. Anything, anything that is, that is opposed to the pure mind of God. To be carnally minded is death. The carnal mind is unholy, unholy. The opposite, you see, to God, contrary to God. Character of God, the Bible, I hold in my hand, is called the Holy Bible. Why? Because it comes from a holy God. And of course, being carnally minded, you're the very opposite to the character of God. Is He alone who can make you holy? very reason he gave us the gospel, sent his son Jesus Christ into the world, that through him that you might be saved, separated unto God, made holy. But until you are, until you embrace the gospel, until you believe in Jesus Christ, until your soul is saved, until you're transformed by the power of God and made holy by God, you remain unholy, opposed, opposite to God, contrary to God. That's what it means to be carnally minded. The image of the heavenly is God. God made man upright. God made man in the beginning in his own image, with a perfect knowledge of God and a perfect righteousness. But of course, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that that's totally erased from humankind now. That's one of the reasons, another reason why God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to restore you to the image of God. But only my gospel, only God's salvation, which I declare to you today, can achieve that. Save you from your carnal mindedness, your opposition to God. And of course, now, instead of fearing the image of God, the heavenly mindedness, now of course you're in the image of the enemy of God, of Satan the devil. When you do the lie, you bear the image of Satan because he was a liar from the beginning, a murderer. He's the arch liar, chief liar. He's the author of all. That's deceitful and untrue, but only the truth will set you free from your carnal mind. 
to be carnally minded is death. It's enmity. Some people would say hostile, but I don't think that that goes far enough. Enmity, absolute and utter hatred. That's what the carnal mind is, the Bible says, not subject to the law of God and cannot be. An aversion, a deep-seated hatred of God and of the law of God. Not just that you don't want to know God. It's not just that you don't want to know or obey the law of God. No, friends, it's a deep-seated, absolute and utter hatred for the God who made you and the God who would save you. To be in the hatred of God and to be in hatred of the law of God is, of course, to be a carnally minded. And as long as, of course, you remain in that state and condition, and there is but only two conditions of the human race, that, of course, which is natural, carnal-minded, natural-born God-haters, or a supernaturally reborn God lover. It is not until God performs the miracle of the new birth, except the man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, understand the kingdom of God. His carnal mind is opposed to it, in hatred of it, of God, and of course of his law also. Maybe perhaps you begin to see what it is that you need to be saved from. Your hatred, deep-seated hatred of God. To be carnally minded since God is dead is to be disobedient to the law of God, rebellious in nature, lawless. Lawlessness, that's the very essence of sin. You were a rebel even before you left your mother's womb. God said, born in sin, shaped in iniquity, coming from your mother's womb with your fist raised in your maker's face. And of course, sin uh, abounding right from day one, before you even took your first breath and before you spoke your first word. Sin, yes, lawlessness, rebellion reigns in the human heart, in the carnal mind, unless God, by His power, by the gospel of His Son, Jesus Christ, changes that nature changes that heart and takes the hatred, takes the enmity out of you and replaces it with a deep-seated love for God, your best good. Enmity, and of course, well, that's revealed, is it not, when the gospel, the good news, the, the message of God's salvation that would save you from such carnally mindedness when it's declared amongst you. The enmity is revealed, is it not? Maybe not expressed by you, but certainly felt in your heart the hatred that somebody should be stood on a street corner preaching about God and about your sin and the salvation, the good news that would bring you to salvation, to a place of safety, that is, out of your enmity. Surely, is that enmity not felt within you? That hatred, that burning anger, and sometimes, of course, it is expressed, well expressed by you. Oh, yes, we've had many many a threat from you. My life 
has even been threatened in this very place where I'm standing now by those opposed to God, opposed to his gospel, opposed to his son Jesus Christ who died for such sinners. Such is the enmity. And some, of course, express that enmity without even realizing why it is. But I'm telling you why it is. Because you are born in sin. Because there is that enmity within you. That deep-seated hatred for God and the things of God. That's the nature. That's the natural state of man and woman born into this world. And why Jesus Christ declares that you must be born again. Religion is not enough. That will not change your heart and nature. That will not take the poison. That will not take the enmity out of your heart. Only the gospel, only the miraculous, only the supernatural power of God Working upon your heart will do that. You must needs repent and believe the gospel. You must needs turn from your sin. You must bring that enmity to the cross of Jesus Christ and nail it to the cross and plead with him that he wash it away in the tide of his blood. Because if he does that, then as you live, in enmity against God, so will you die one day and stand before a sin-hating and holy God. So I urge you, repent. To be carnally minded is death, says God. The sentence of condemnation has already been passed. And here you are today, men and women, already, already in your condemned cell awaiting the executioner to come and fetch you out, to take you to the scaffold. And when you fall through that trap door, it will be an everlasting fall into the blackness and darkness of hell's damnation. If that carnal mind of yours is not altered, not changed, if you're not reborn, of God, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God, born again, says Jesus. As one good bishop, can anything good come out of the mouth of a bishop? Well, there did once, the Bishop of Liverpool, back in the day, said that if you're not born again, the day will come when you wish you had never been born at all because of that enmity, because of that nature in which you were born, in which you live, and which you will die, if God does not take it from you. But to be spiritually minded, says God, is life and peace. This is the fruit of a man, a woman being born again. They become spiritually minded. Their minds are renewed. Now their minds are not opposed to God. Now they are thinking God's thoughts after him, which of course are to be found in the Bible. Spiritual influence, you know, the witness. Oh, you can see it, says God. Behold, everything, all things are new. The old has passed away, or begun to at least. And of course it becomes evident. Behold, says God, you can see it. This person is different. This person is new. He doesn't do the things that he used to do before. He doesn't mix with the people he used to mix with before. Oh, there's a change. There's a phenomenal change. And all his friends, family, and neighbor, they can see it and are quite disturbed by the change that they see in this person who is now spiritually minded and they have a life in them that they never beheld before and they have a peace about them a tranquility about them that wasn't there before 
to be spiritually minded is life and peace, you see. That's the result of a man, a woman being born again of the Spirit of God. And of course it is now, instead of, instead of being opposed to God, there's an acceptance by God, by this person who has been born again, now spiritually minded and now acceptable to God, now there's a, a realm, you know, that they've entered into. It's called the kingdom of God. And of course, you see, they move. They move in this, this spiritual realm like they never did before. There's a love for God instead of a hatred. There's, a, there's an acceptance by God because now they're spiritual people. They have spiritual life in them. There could never be before when they were carnally minded, when they were in a state of death, but now, now, now they're in a state of life. They have eternal life in their souls. Ah, oh, new, different altogether. They're, they're, they've been justified now. Now they're right with God. To be carnally minded is dead, spiritual dead is to be not right with God, but now you see as a result of this new birth of being born again, this person, this man now you see, has been justified before God, is right with God, not because of something they've done, but because of what God has done in them and to them. And because of the faith you see that God has given to them. It's a gift of God you see. The gift of God is not of you. You might as well try and pull yourself up by your bootlaces as try and believe yourself. So God's all of God. Grace of God from start to finish. God don't give it to you. You don't get it. You never get it. You'll die carnally minded and enmity against God. You go to lost eternity that way. Unless God smiles upon you, unless God's chosen you, unless God's given you to Jesus Christ, unless God gives you the gift of spiritual life, unless God gives you the gift of faith. But this, this man now, you see, has been born again. He's spiritually minded. He has life. He is uh, accepted of God because he is justified before God as a result of his faith in Jesus Christ. Not because of anything he's done, not because he's religious, but because he has faith, faith in Jesus Christ. It's that and that alone that justifies the man before God. Not your works, not your charitable deeds, not your religion. Oh, that's a stench in the nostrils of God. That's as carnal, that's as fleshly as your godless atheism. It's no different, it's no better. It's no more acceptable to God. You'd be the most religious person in the world and won't put spiritual life into your soul. This person now, you see, they walk in obedience to the law of God like they never could before. Because to be carnally minded, you cannot be subject to the law of God. That's an impossibility, it's not in you. Because of that enmity, that deep-seated hatred for God and for God's law. But now the man, the woman who's been born again, the spiritually minded person has life and peace and have the ability that they never had before given to, given to them of God. A delight in the law of God. And it's their delight to do the will of God, to obey the will of God. You see, friends, it's those who hear and do the will of God. It's those who receive the favor of God. And of course, this person is a hope, a hope that does not disappoint. A hope not just for this world, 
but for the world to come. Oh, I know, I know it's all, it, it all doesn't matter, it's all, it's all of no importance to you whatsoever. As long as you've got the fullness of life and breath in you, health and strength, but when your life's threatened, you know, when you come to the edge, when you get the death sentence, you know, from the doctor, you know, when it comes to that point when your life is threatened, yeah, it's different then. You're not so brave, you know. You're not so, uh, you're not so blasé about it then. Heard bread of a, a, a cow to a, a dear lady in the newspaper just the other week. She claimed, she said herself, she testified, she had everything and she knew everything. She was an arrogant piece of work. But then, of course, death came stalking and it was pronounced that she'd got terminal cancer. And now she says, it has humbled me. Now she says, I'm just a woman desperately wanting to live. Death, you see, friends, it's a great leveler. It brings us all down to the same level. You can be rich, you can be a king, you can have it all, you can know it all, but you're going to come to the same place as everybody else. It is appointed unto men once to die. You may be a king, you may just be a street preacher, but everybody faces the grim reaper. But what hope have you? I ask you, carnally minded people, I ask you, what hope do you have? Not just for this world, but for the world to come. Because it is appointed unto men once to die, after this comes the judgment. But this person you see who has spiritual life in them, they have life and they have peace. Even in the face of death they have peace, a tranquility about them. Because they know that all is well between them and their maker. They have a home in heaven. They have a place to go when they're turned out of this world. If you were to be turned out of your house tonight, you would want to know that you've got somewhere warm to go to, would you not? Well, friends, you're going to be turned out of your earthly home. You're going to be turned out of this world. So where will you end up? Well, with that enmity, that deep-seated hatred for God, I have to tell you solemnly, you'll be turned into hell, that's where. For the Bible clearly declares that those who forget God, all the nations who forget God shall be turned into hell with God. So you must needs be saved from that carnal mind, which is death, not just spiritual death, not just physical death, but eternal death one day. So you see, friends, it's the fruit. It's the fruit of your birth. It's the fruit of your natural birth. It's the way you were born. It's the way you came into the world. From natural parents. Natural parents get natural children. They got children in their own likeness. You see, that's the way it's been right from the beginning. When our first parents, when they fell into sin, they brought sin and death into the world. And they began to get children in their own sinful likeness. And so it has been one parent after another down through the generations until this time. Can you bring a clean thing out of an unclean? How can you get clean, clean children out of unclean parents? This is impossible. Can you change the spots on a leopard? You say, no, that's his natural state and condition. It would take a miracle to do that. Of course it would. 
So how can you, who are accustomed to doing evil, possibly do good, says God? Not unless a miracle is performed. Not unless, that is, God supernaturally changes that natural state and condition in which you were born, which is a state of enmity against God, hatred for God, a deep-seated burning hatred for the God who would do you good, who is love, who so loved the world of ruined, depraved sinners full of enmity in their hearts and minds against him. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish in their enmity against God, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But this is the condemnation, that in your enmity, your hatred of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, you have not believed in the name of God's only begotten Son. This is the result, you see, of that enmity of which God in his word speaks. And unless it's taken, unless it's nailed to the cross, unless it's renounced, unless there's a turning, unless there's repentance with you, let the wicked forsake his way of enmity and the unrighteous man his thoughts, his hateful thinking of God, then, friend, you will die. No, sir, I will not shut up. Not as long as I get a breath in my body. I'll tell you when I'll shut up, mister. When there's not a when there's not a sinner when there's not a sinner left in Newcastle. When there's no adulterers, blasphemers, liars left in Newcastle, Everybody then I'll shut up. You're right there, and it's a lie. Exchanging the truth for a lie. That, of course, comes as a result of that same enmity in your heart against God. So, take it to the cross. Take it to Jesus. That enmity in your heart against God before you die, before you breathe your last before you go out of this world, before it's too late, take it to Jesus, take it to the cross, and nail it to the cross in faith, and cry out to the Son of God, have mercy upon my God-hating soul, and take this hatred out of me, before I die, lest I die and go to a lost eternity in this state and condition, Three generation that you need, not religion. Religion won't save you. Religion won't change you. Religion won't make you love God. Religion won't put the love of God into your soul. God has to love you first before you can love Him. And until you've been reborn, until you've been regenerated, all the religion in the world and it matters not what you call your religion, Romanism, Islam, Buddhism, Confucianism, Evolutionism, it's all the same, it's all religion. And that one's taken and nailed it to the cross as well. It's regeneration that you need, spiritual mindedness, life and peace. Spiritual life in your soul that only God himself can put there. That enmity of mine, the result of your natural depravity, state of which you were born, unless you're reborn, I tell you the day will come when you will wish you had never been born at all. So friends, for you just simply to become religious, 
That's like a doctor taking a plaster and sticking it on somebody who's got terminal cancer. Yeah? That's what that's akin to. It's heart surgery that you need for God to take his scalpel and open up your heart and let out the poison of unbelief and enmity and put there in its place a new heart to take the heart of stone out of you and put a heart of flesh within you, a heart that loves God and loves his law, delights in his law, spiritually minded, a heart that believes in and trusts in Jesus Christ, in the gospel of God's Son, the only hope any person in any nation, Son of God who loved sinners, who came and lived and loved and died and rose again from the dead that they might have this spiritual mindedness, this eternal life and peace, Jesus Christ. The Bible is that which testifies of him. These are they, he says, these are they that testify of me, the word of God, the Holy Scriptures. Search the scriptures, Jesus says, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they that testify of me, the word of God. So I bid you, search them, implore you, be reconciled to God while you have the breath of life in you, while you have the opportunity as the gospel is proclaimed to you, because that day is coming when you want to search, but you won't be able to. It'll be fruitless. Seeking the Lord while he may be found, says God. Call you upon him while he is near. And he comes so very, very near to you in the proclamation of the gospel. But it is coming, friends, when it won't be to be heard of you in your nation. They'll just be the they'll just be the noise of the minarets calling you to their idolatrous worship. That's the judgment of God upon you. You won't bow, you won't submit, you won't surrender to the love of the true and living God. You'll bow to the sword of Allah and his false, idolatrous, satanic religion. That's the judgment of God. It's already, the wrath of God is already upon your nation. It's all over you like a rash. And I tell you, if you don't run, if you don't flee the wrath to come, you'll perish in your sin, you'll die in your sin, to be carnally minded is death, eternal death. And there's only one answer to death, and that's life. And only one answer to eternal death, and that's eternal life. And these are they that testify of me, says Jesus. In them you think you have eternal life. Search the scriptures. See that these things are so. Read the word of God for yourself. Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Like a copy of God's word, it's offered to you. We have charge of it without any cost or obligation to you. You just take and do it as you will. You like one, you come and ask for one. Repent ye and believe the gospel, says Jesus. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Newcastle. Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you'd like a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, precious soul.